Hello readers, I'm Jessie Quinn from Cup of Books, and welcome to my monthly minis video for April. I know I should probably change the title of these videos because they're not monthly at all, but I really like the alliteration, so for now we're sticking with it. For this video I'm going to do mini reviews of four of the books I read this month, and then the remaining two I will do full reviews of at some point in May. Probably on a Thursday. Please keep in mind that just because these books are not getting full reviews doesn't mean that I didn't like them. I may have liked them, I just may not have had enough to say. The first book I read in April was actually a non-fiction book, which is a little unusual for me. It was Cinderella Ate My Daughter, Dispatches from the New Girly Girl Culture by Peggy Ornstein. This is a non-fiction book about the toys and media, particularly in the United States, that gets marketed towards young girls. I liked this book, I agreed with a lot of the ideas presented, but I also felt like Ornstein's analysis was really superficial. Her analysis was not intersectional. She only looked at gender and sex, which she continued to conflate. Pro tip, gender and sex are two different things. She only really briefly, briefly touches on class, race, ability, sexuality. And I found that really problematic because I don't think we can talk about children's media and the way girls are portrayed or the toys that are given without talking about all those things I just listed. It's also worth noting that there is no acknowledgement of trans folks in this. The closest we get is her discussion around pop whose parents decided to not reveal their sex and to not gender their kid. She made a really snarky comment about, oh, but what pronouns would we use for this kid? I liked this book. I didn't love it. There were a few ideas that I was like, oh, I hadn't even thought about it from that angle. But then there's the fact that it's not intersectional. The next book I read in April was Air by James Swallow. This is a novelization of the first three episodes of Stargate Universe. As far as tie-in novels go, I thought this one was pretty okay. I liked it for the most part. I gave it three stars, which again, for a tie-in, is pretty damn good. This one didn't have that many extra scenes, I felt. There were extra lines, definitely. Some of the scenes got sort of enhanced with extra dialogue, but there wasn't really a lot of scenes that I could point to and be like, that wasn't in the pilot. In terms of the characterization, it's sort of hit and miss. I feel like the author really understood Eli and a few of the other characters, but just did not get how to write Rush or did not get how to write Greer. Most of the main players in the TV show got the story told from their perspective at one point in this novel, with the exception of Chloe Armstrong, which really frustrated me because the way Chloe Armstrong is portrayed in this book is that she's the pretty girl and she's just there to be pretty. Part of me wants to just completely rip this author apart for doing that because it was really frustrating. It was so sexist. But I also think that's a flaw that was probably in the original script and it definitely comes up in the TV show where a lot of the times Chloe does really awesome stuff but it's never really portrayed as really awesome stuff because she is first and foremost a pretty face and there for the guys to fight over. Camille gets a really awesome little, little scene of narration where she talks about Sharon, who is her girlfriend on Earth. Although, admittedly, the moments where she talks about Sharon, it's more implied that they're girlfriends than actually explicitly stated. Also, Dr. Lisa Park was in this and she got lots of fabulous lines. It's certainly not a book that I think you would read unless you've seen the TV show, because I feel like on its own it's not that strong. But if you have prior knowledge of the show and you really love some of the characters, it's definitely a fun story. After reading Air, I went on to read The Number One Ladies Detective Agency by Alexander McCall Smith. This novel is not really a mystery novel, it's much more of a slice of life novel talking about a woman who runs a detective agency. There's no figuring out who did it or what happened. You just sort of are along for the ride. It's also really episodic, and at times I think that held it back. There were all these plot lines that would get dropped, and another story would happen, and then would get picked up, and then would get dropped, and another story would happen, and then get picked up. But it never really felt like they were woven in very well. 
The writing style in this one is much more on the minimalistic side, but every word seems really well chosen. And there are some descriptions that, while being fairly simple, are just so beautiful. There were a few portrayals and moments concerning the women in this novel that I felt kind of uncomfortable with that just felt a little off. After I finished this one, I looked up the author and I found out that he's actually a white man who was born in Zimbabwe and now lives in the United Kingdom. After I found that out, some of the things that felt really off in this novel made sense to me because I think it was the fact that the author was white and was trying to write women who were black and there was some sort of disconnect there. But also take that with a grain of salt because I am also white. I really thought that I would absolutely adore this one when I first picked it up because it's about a woman starting a detective agency and that is just so much in line with my interests. But after reading it, it just wasn't as awesome as I thought it was going to be. I gave this one 3 out of 5 stars on my Goodreads. I liked it, but I probably won't be picking up any more in the series. And then the last book that I'm going to be giving you a mini review of is The Explorer by James... Smythe. I'm just gonna go with Smythe until someone corrects me. Part of the reason I'm doing a mini review for this one is because doing a full review would get really spoilery really fast. Plot-wise, I really like the way the story was told. The flashbacks were used really well. I like the way they were interwoven with what was happening in the main narrative. I also like the idea that we started sort of at the end, but then we sort of went backwards and figured out what happened. Sort of. This novel is definitely more focused on the plot than the characters, and I think it really suffers for it at times. Cormac, the main character, wasn't that interesting. The most interesting thing about him was the fact that we didn't know if he was a reliable narrator or not. The author has a more minimalistic style, which worked in terms of the tone of the novel, which is a very nitty-gritty thriller-esque tone. But our narrator, Cormac, is also a journalist who was picked to go on this mission because of the way he could describe being in space and because of the beautiful way he writes. I just had a hard time imagining Cormac as this really eloquent writer. If you are going to pick this one up, I would just keep in mind that if you're squeamish, the first 50-60 pages contain some pretty graphic descriptions of people dying or being injured. I give this one 3 out of 5 stars on my Goodreads. I liked it. I think if you're looking for a quick sci-fi thriller, you could definitely do a lot worse. So that is the end of my mini reviews. The two books that will be getting their own separate reviews are Buddha Baby by Kim Wong Keltner and The Murder at the Vic Carriage by Agatha Christie. So stay tuned for these.